Hello again, Dave Asherbrenner here, and welcome to part two of the Lost Recumbent. Today we're going to talk a little bit about um, how the steering system on the typical recumbent relates to the all-wheel tilting steering system on the AR3. So don't go away. We're going to get to that as soon as we check in. You're looking at the typical frame layout on today's recumbent. Um, it's been referred to the angle of the steering is compensated by uh, the angle of the steering arms that come out if you look at those. And if you look at the trajectory of the axles on this picture, you'll see that they meet at some point in space and the Ackerman theory dictates that the inside wheel is following the same path of that radius as the outside wheel. That way you don't get any um, scrub or any interference between the two wheels. Uh, being so close together, they don't need this sort of an angle though. So I'm not sure where they came up with this. This is from my KMX. Um, this is a production bike. And I looked to see if there was any uh, accident that it had been in or any cause where these angles would be so far off, but I couldn't find it. So I could only determine that uh, they meant to do this on purpose so little Pee Wee Herman there um, we're gonna examine what I did to it to correct some of the problems that it had it became very obvious that that was a source of its twitchiness and I've ridden a few recumbents um, haven't done a lot but the one thing I've noticed about them is the steering's real twitchy on them and I'm not sure that they're all like that but the ones I've ridden have a certain inherent uh, twitchiness that only gets worse the faster you go so here seems to be the problem and how I fixed it you notice how the two control arms highlighted in yellow uh, come out at these extreme angles uh, what I did was I followed the Ackerman compensation rule and pointed them toward the rear wheel or toward the rear axle where the wheel makes contact with the ground I added to the right and left control arm what I call splint plates, a triangular plate that actually bolts on to the control arm and changes the angle of the trajectory. I immediately discovered um, that was probably most of the problem. Most of the twitchiness went away, but it was a night and day difference uh, between the stock steering system. Another observation I made along the way was um, after examining the steering, um, it has what they call a inside wheel steering lift. The angle of the kingpin that the wheel rotates on or the axle will actually tilt in a corner and um, opposite to leaning into the corner, it will actually lean out of the corner slightly. And this isn't uh, very obvious by looking at the rear wheel um, as well as the front uh, cross beam that hold your uh, steering uh, knuckles or kingpins, trunnions. As illustrated by my CAD program, uh, we got about a 2 degree lift which equates to 1.3, let's just say 4 inches um, across that front end. Which brings me to the thought that there's something inherently wrong with the steering system. Now I know what you're probably thinking to yourself. What right do I have to challenge the sovereignty of a steering system that's been used on recumbents, the entire automobile industry, every three and four wheel vehicle over time, racing cars for over a hundred years. This is something you can look at as a mechanical apparatus uh, for the car or automobile that basically triggers a chain of events. And this chain of events happens so quickly that it's just a natural, natural thing. But I looked at it as if you're on a recumbent, you're not in a car, you're on a bicycle. You, the neat thing about riding a bicycle is that you lean into the corners. That was the attraction and fun of it. It's like flying as you lean and bank into the corners and turn. It's a wonderful feeling. What if you could get that on a recumbent? 
Well, that's the question I asked myself when I was 26 years old and embarked on uh, changing the geometry of how three-wheeled recumbents uh, react. You want to stay tuned to the next part of the series while I actually go through and show you some of the CAD modeling I've done and we put that to a 3D printer and uh, we tested out uh, different geometries to kind of pinpoint where this steering system would function the best. If you haven't done so yet, please like, subscribe, and hit the little bell. You'll be notified of the next chapter when it comes out. I promise you won't want to miss this one. And I will see you in the next installment of the other e-bike guy. This is Dave Ashenbrenner. We'll see you next time. Thank you.